Hello, welcome to the In Hope of Eternal Life channel. Me sharing with you, I'm Patterson Mate. And by God's grace, this whole week we shall be looking at a theme which says that they met Nodi. And our key text is going to be coming from John chapter 17, verse 3. And according to the King James Bible, it, it reads, this is life internal, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is going to be the key text for the whole of this week. That they may know thee is our theme. Let's pray, Almighty Father. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for enabling us listen to your word at this very time king of glory we thank you for the gift of jesus and the hope of eternal life we pray that as we are going to talk about your word may you speak to us may you meet us at our points of need may we hear your word and may you speak to our souls lord forgive us of our trespasses and continuously Lead us by your will, and may your spirit continuously teach us. In Jesus' name I pray. Our key text has earlier read from John 17 verse 3 which says, And this is life internal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Today being the first day, we are going to look, we are going to study about life. Life in contrast of internal life, or as opposite of internal life. The verse introduces us and tells us of what internal life is. For today, before looking at internal life, we should first know what life is. Life, according to biology they would say life is defined as a system capable of performing functions such as eating metabolizing excreting breathing moving growing reproducing and responding to external stimulus that is life however different people define life in different ways and the psychologists uh, philosophers, normal people, each one has uh, his own definition of what life could be. And personally, I believe everyone has a way he defines what life is. From the uh, Oxford Dictionary, life is simply a period between birth and death. Or someone can say life is... Uh, a period between birth and present or someone can say life is events and experiences of human existence i want to define life in that perspective not in the biological perspective what defines my life is simply the events that come into my life and the experiences that i go through each and every day that's what i want to emphasize about what life is each one of us has a way he perceives life and has a way he conducts life and based on the influences that surround us probably the culture the education uh, and so many other influences uh, uh, the friends and the people we come into contact with they tend to have an influence on us about life and the, all these factors uh, determine how we value life or how we define life or what we take life to be. However, today I want us to study about some things that we tend to define as being life, yet in reality they are not life. And uh, our case study will be from the Bible. We are going to have our study from one of the men in the Bible, one among the many men in the Bible who wanted to fulfill life in its fullest. And at the end, he made conclusions 
of what life is not. Once we get to know what life is not, then we shall look for other ways of looking for what life is. We shall have our Sunday from Ecclesiastes chapter 2 from verse 4 to verse 18. And from each of these verses, we shall keep on knowing what life is not. Because this is a man who tried to enjoy life in, it, in its full, fullness, but at the end, he kept on making conclusions that really what he wanted to fulfill was not what he thought it was. So we shall keep on learning from each of these verses what life is not. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 Verse 5 says, I made me gardens, oak, orchards, and planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water there with the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and made and had servants born in my house also. I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in. Jerusalem. Here we are seeing Solomon telling us what he did in his lifetime. Verse 8 says, I gathered me also silver and gold and peculiar treasure of the kings of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. And whatever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I beheld not my heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all the labor. And this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked at all the works that my hands had wrought, And all the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. There was no profit under the sun. The verse I'm from reading is verse 11. And is making conclusion of the things we have read that he did. In verse 4 he told us that he built the best house that a person could ever build. He even told us he had a garden, the best garden in all the world at that time. He says he had a garden for fruits, different gardens for different fruits. He also says he planted trees, beautiful trees of all kinds. Verse 5 tells us that he had trees at his place of all kinds. He said he had a, a swimming pool in his place. He said he, in verse 6, to collect for him water and even had water tanks, had swimming pools. He had every beautiful thing that he wished. He says he even had workers, man servants that could do the work for him. He even says he had singers, he had musicians who could sing for him. He had riches. Verse 8 was saying us that he, uh, he got silver and gold, which is rare of most of other kings. He had musicians that could sing for him. Uh, they would play for him all types of musical instruments. Verse 9 was saying he became more known, more famous. And he, in verse 10 he tells us that whatever his eyes wanted, he got it. What a life. Most of us, this is what we would wish to define as life. Having all the best, being well known, having the best house, having riches, fame popularity and all these things however in verse 10 verse 11 he says when he looked all, at all these things that we wish we would also have in our lives he comes up with a conclusion and he says and behold all was van vanity and vexation of spirit and there was no prophet under the sun. He, when he sees all these things, after going through them and doing them and doing whatever that his heart desired, he says that all that was nothing. We shall continue with the conclusion he was making from uh, verse 12, 13 and 14. He says, I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly. For what can man do that cometh after the king, even that which has been done already. Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly. 
as far as light extends darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happens to them all, and that is death, which he was re- referring to. However, we are seeing that the conclusion from verse 11, 12, and 13, and 14 is that what he thought life was, and what we also think life is, he says, all these things are nothing. This is an experiment that he has performed before us, that we shouldn't birth, we shouldn't birth our hopes in the material things of the world, because that is not what life should be. If that was life, probably he would have, he would have found that these things are what life should be. He would have made a better conclusion, not such a conclusion that says he saw that all this was vanity. What do we we learn from the life of Solomon? Solomon tried to enjoy life in its fullness, in seeking earthly things as the highest good. However, he learned the emptiness of life. I pray that may we also not do as he did because if we try to find the fullness of life in enjoying pleasures on earth, we shall also learn the same lesson he learned that life is empty in seeking it, in seeking to satisfy it in worldly pleasures. At the end of Ecclesiastes, there are some words of advice that Solomon tells us. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 of verse 11 tells us that the word the words of the wise are as gods and as nails fastened by the master of the assemblies which are given from one shepherd. He tells us that the words of the wise are as nails that hold firm whichever structure they hold. That we learn. What are some lessons that we learn from the wise man? We see a man that lived life to his fullness. However, him living life to his fullness does not stop him from falling into temptations of the evil one. The temptations come our way, however rich we may be. As Solomon was rich, he was still he still fell into temptations. Honor does not protect us from falling into temptations. We see that Solomon had the highest political rank, being the king by then. Not even the academician or wisdom protect us from falling into temptation. We see that Solomon is the wisest person who has ever lived on earth, but he still fell into temptations of the evil one. Not even being firm, he was well known. Being a king was known the whole of his kingdom, even outside of his kingdom. All this did not protect him from falling into temptation of the evil one. However, what is our safeguard against falling into temptation as Solomon did? It is only in prayer and watchfulness that we are protected from the evil one. None of the privileges that come our way being known, being rich, uh, being wise, all these things never protect us from falling into temptation. We shall have another Bible text from Isaiah 33 verse 6 which says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of your salvation. These are, we have wisdom from the word of God. And the verse tells us that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. Our being, our not falling into temptation will be because of the wisdom that we get from God's word and the strength of salvation that is given unto us through God's word. Wisdom from God's word, even our salvation, is dependent on what we know from God's word. That's why we need God's word for our salvation. 
because our salvation is dependent on what we know from the word of the Lord. The other lesson we learn from the life of Solomon is we learn that as long as life lasts, there will be need of regarding affections and passions with a firm purpose. As long as we have life, we must we must strive to guard, to guard our affections and our passions against the evil one. However, as we end our sharing today, I request you that you be not discouraged. You may have spent the rest of your life in planning to live your life as Solomon did, having the best house, being rich, being firm, and all these. However, there is hope for us. We may change our perspectives of life and live a life not as Solomon did. Our last verse is coming from Isaiah 55, verse 7. The Lord encourages us by saying, verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. If we had thoughts of living life as Solomon did, may we abandon those thoughts, because our life will also end in a conclusion that he made that all these were vanities of life. I believe, and I want you to believe with me, that life, we have looked at what life is not. In simple time, in simple terms, life is not being the richest or being rich. Life is not uh, occupying the highest political rank, like being the, the, the president, having a certain political positions. Life is not being the wisest. Life is not all about being known. But I believe that we are here for a purpose. We have this life to prepare for another life that we looked at at the start of our sermon. John 17 verse 3 that was telling us this is life internal that they may know thee, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Life is all about internal life and this life is not worth it being called life if there was no internal life. It's only internal life that's worth being called internal life. May the Lord bless you. Let's end our sermon with a prayer. We thank you, Almighty Father, for speaking to us. May you help us make right choices. May you help us have the right perspective of what life is. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like you write in the comment section uh, you write what you, you write there what you think is the purpose of life what do you think is the purpose of life you can share with us your views then the other thing you can write about why do you think god created us or why do you think he allowed us to live we are alive because god allows us, because god allowed us to be alive what do you think is the purpose of life and why do you think God created us? Thank you.